Hey, John Paul here from JP Enterprises. And guess what? We're not gonna talk about guns today, more or less. But do you like knives? Of course you do. If you're a gun person, I'd say it's 99% sure that you've probably got a drawer full of knives, like me. I've got a lot of knives. Uh, I've acquired for various reasons over the year. I'm not a knife collector. I don't buy collectible knives. I just, I just like knives. And I have a lot of them. And this is a few of them. I've got, uh, th these knives probably have a little bit of a story behind them, and we're going to go over, I'm going to talk about some of these knives that I've, I've got here. Uh, one case, I, you know, when I'm at the SHOT Show every year, I like to reward myself at the end, and I'll go around and usually buy myself a knife. So, one year, Strider was right across uh, the aisle from us, so uh, before I left, I bought myself a nice, a nice Strider knife. And I kind of like this one because it is so slim. It really carries well. I, I like to carry my knives actually inside my waistband here. And uh, a knife that's thin doesn't, doesn't really bother me, so I can carry it well. Uh, one year, this fella came into the SHOT Show booth. And uh, he's a custom knife maker, Monero. And uh, he started showing me what he was doing there. And uh, he had this one knife with him. And I says, well, I got to have it. And so this is a Monero custom, and look at the look at the uh, shank on this thing here. This this thing must be uh, five sixteenths. I mean, th this is a serious piece of machinery here. I bet you could open fifty five gallon drums with this knife. And then of course, everybody's got to have their Rambo first blood. I mean, seriously, take that, you commies! What a crazy knife. Now, what do I need this for? Well. Of course I need that. And who can forget the case Jim Bowie knife? Here's the real thing, the case Jim Bowie knife. You can see it's actually got his picture right there on the blade. What an insane knife that is. And you got to have your USMC K-Bar, so of course I've got one of those. And uh, one year we had a great joint project with uh, 511. Uh, we made some uh, a series of custom rifles with the uh, 511 uh, logos in their special colors. They were called the uh, Always Be Prepared Rifles. And uh, they gave us uh, some beautiful knives. So, got a 511 knife here. And uh, how about all these spider codes here? Uh, I got, actually I had six of these. They were all identical. And uh, back in the late 90s, the early 2000s, uh, the state of Minnesota had a, a state three-gun championship every year. So I had six wins in a row. So the, two, the 1998, these goes from, uh, it was missing here. They go from 98 to 2003. And the 98, of course, that was the first one I won. And that was kind of my introduction into lockback uh, uh, clip-on knives. And man, I just, I, I tell you what, I don't know about you, but if I go out to the house without my knife on, I might as well have my pants off. I mean, I, I just feel like I'm just not all there if I don't have my knife. So I actually wore that one out. Literally wore the engraving off it from carrying it all those years, broke the tip, and it just, I used that knife so much, it, at one point it became unserviceable, and I think that's why it's no longer in my collection. I have no idea what happened to it, but I got the other five going up to 2003. Kind of a nice remembrance that, uh, of those events. They, they were great events that were held up in uh, uh, just outside of Duluth, Minnesota every year. Oh, here I got a, a, a cold steel uh, Tanto. Uh, and I see it's got, the, it's got the company logo on that. And uh, I remember at the time I had just acquired our first chemical etching machine to mark our barrels and various other parts. So I was experimenting on everything. I had logos on you name it. And I, I wonder if I even put no, I didn't make these, but I know that I had other Spydercos and other blades that I had with it, with my logo on it. So that's kind of the story of why that has a JP Enterprises logo on it. Oh, these are kind of cool. These are by Cray Custom Knives, and one of them was actually a gift from my son uh, for being in his wedding party. Uh, and this was a, a gift from uh, the owner, Javen. So very cool knives coming with some really neat... Uh, She's there, so actually really practical hunting knives there. And I got some cheap CRKT knives, but hey, I like these also. Kind of a Tanto, I'm kind of a, uh, a fan of the Tanto shape. I just aesthetically like the way they look. 
And that's the neat thing about knives. You know, knives, are, they have tremendous utility, but yet they've got this artistic and aesthetic quality to them, which uh, the way I look at our firearms, for instance, I, I just think that we have art that shoots, and I think here in knives you can have, there again, that aesthetic aspect to something that is so pragmatic. Here's an inexpensive knife, which I kind of like. It's, it's sharp as a, as a razor, and I've carried this around. It's got kind of a neat two-tone contrasting uh, anodized finish there, so I'm kind of into the, uh, the glitz look. This one is kind of cool. Now, this is an Alishowitz. So this is really kind of an exotic, custom hand-built knife by Alan Alishowitz, who also makes watches, by the way. So I should take a look at his stuff. Uh, he actually made this especially for me, and we did a little bit of horse trading. Here's another, another uh, CRKT, which is, I think, kind of interesting because the way it opens, it actually uh, opens out like this. Hinges open, which very unusual. I think I've just about cut myself uh, using it, but uh, kind of an interesting concept as to the way it works. I've carried this one a lot because it's kind of like a tool kit with a blade. Got my blade, and then of course I got a driver, got my four bits. So if I think I'm going to need to be fixing things, if I'm out in the property and the ATV, whatever. So I'm, I do carry that one quite a bit. A little bit too thick for me, but it works. Oh, and then I think I got this one off a prize table and a bag of uh, bag of stuff off of some prize table. It's my Glock knife. You got to have your your Glock knife, very pragmatic. Oh, and check this out. This is an Almar. Now that really is an elegant looking knife. Really a beaut. Really well made. I like that. It's one of my favorite knives. Carried that quite a bit. One of my friends got me this Microtech, also a very cool knife. Again, very thin, so it carries well. And this is an automatic knife, of course, the only one I have. Very pragmatic. Here's another inexpensive little Spyderco. These were some cheapies they did that had various uh, uh, EDM type uh, art formed in the blade. They're very cool. It's got an American flag in there. And uh, here's another one, which uh, what I call a Sunday go to meeting knife. So this is interesting. It's uh, William Henry, and it comes in a little sheath here that has its clip. It's because the knife itself is not a clip on, but the sheath is. And uh, this is uh, really a cosmetically beautiful little knife. It's Damascus. And look at that. It's got sapphires in the handle. And on the uh, on the blade, and the, the the grip is titanium, so it weighs practically nothing. Really, a pretty knife. And I had another knife very similar to this at one time. And uh, it was something that I, you know, if you went to church on Sunday or something, I could you know carry that to, stuck in my belt because it was it was small and very thin. Well, I had this knife at a match. And uh, it ended up in my to toiletries bag because I was flying. One of the rare cases where I wasn't driving, I actually flew. So it ended up in my toiletries bag, and I forgot about it. Well, I think it was about a year or two later, we took the family European vacation. And sure enough, we're in the UK. And it, if you know anything about the UK, they don't like knives. Uh, having a, uh, a knife, especially a drop, uh, especially a lockback knife like this, that's a felony there. It's uh, very serious. They take it very seriously. It's kind of like the nanny state thing. Uh, I think you can't even have kitchen knives that are pointy over there. So I had this knife with me, and uh, when we were boarding the train from the UK going to Paris, of course, they x-ray all your luggage because you have, you have access to your luggage on the, on the train as you wouldn't on the plane. So sure enough, they found this knife. And, uh, they uh, called me in, and of course, uh, my family thinking that the whole vacation is now on the on the rocks. And I, I, I can, I see my my wife, my two boys. My wife is just scowling at me because she knows that I'm impossible to sanitize, and I'm always getting into trouble like this. And so the guy on the other side of the desk, he's looking at this knife in front of me, and he's 
opening it and locking it like he'd never seen one before. And he says, they, they let you have these in the U.S.? I'm just about to say, yeah, we carry guns too, you know. No, 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 don't, don't say that. So he gave me a choice, of course, uh, either uh, go to jail or relinquish the knife. And, and of course, uh, one of my good friends, I have some really close friends over in the UK that are in the industry, of course, and, and they're also from the shooting community. And one of those friends of mine is Mike Darby, who actually at the time was a Scotland Yard detective. And I, I was thinking I probably should have had him on speed dial. I was, think, I was thinking I was going to have to call Mike to get me out of this bind, but they let me go. And uh, so we continued on with our vacation. But that was a pretty tense moment. I thought I was going to be some big trouble over there because I hadn't sanitized myself and here this knife was in with my stuff. So what we really want to talk about is uh, the fact that I've wanted to offer a knife uh, through the company over the years. And uh, I just happened to stumble upon a custom knife maker down in Florida last year. And I was really impressed with his work. And we got talking about this and, and I said, well, how many knives do I have to order before we do a custom knife just for our company? And, and we came to an agreement on this, so here we are. Uh, we're going to have our own knife here and I think that uh, this is something that you're really going to like because uh, we're going to have these on the website for sale, of course, and we're also going to have various promotional uh, considerations where you'll be able to maybe earn one of these knives through some purchases and whatnot. But just take a look at these. Uh, they're full Damascus. Just absolutely beautiful knives. Yeah, made to my, my spec. I wanted a drop point, of course, for those people that wanted more of a pragmatic hunting knife. And this one comes in a, in a vertical sheath. And then the Tanto comes in a horizontal sheath. So I, I'm kind of partial to the Tanto look, um, but both are really, really similar and beautiful in their, their execution. I think his quality is just outstanding. Yep, I'm very excited about these. And I think you will be too. So look, we've talked about some of my favorite knives and I've given you a few stories behind them. And, We'd actually like to hear about your favorite knife or maybe a knife story that you have. So put that down in the comments section so we can all read about it. Again, this is John Paul at JP Enterprises, and we'll see you at the range.